Good evening, and welcome to Shh Productions Vintage Radio Hour. Our collaboration with 30 performers from across the country, an outstanding production staff, and the legacy of audio entertainment that harkens back to the golden days of radio will bring you 12 shows filled with suspense, mystery, fear, and maybe a little murder. The upcoming show, Bring Me to Life, originally airing in 1947 and written by Willis Cooper, features Jared Saltman, Scott Douglas Wilson, Cheryl Robinson Campbell, and Brent Jones in a chaotic story about a story. Stay tuned after the show to hear about next week's doubleheader. Now, No more idea than a rabbit. Page one. Well, that's a start. Let me see. What I need is a character. 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 Come on. Character. Have you got three dollars? No, I haven't got three dollars. What do you want three dollars for? The milkman. You had some money last night. I got 80 cents. Thanks. Listen, Ruthie, give me an idea for a character. I haven't got any ideas for characters. Haven't you really got three dollars? He's been here twice. Well, give him a check. What do I want? It's a character for this script. The only one I can think of now is the milkman. You get to work. Yeah, yeah, get to work. Sure, sure. If I get a character, I'll get to work. That's all I need. Then I'll get a story, all right, I think. Come on, character. Come on, character. Oh, come on in, Ruth. What are you... What's the matter with you? I said, what's the matter with you? You calling me? Didn't you knock at this door? Are you crazy? Well, I thought I heard somebody. Get to work. All right, all right. <sighs> oh, God, and I must be going. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't write that. How did that get on the paper? Bring me to life. Well, I didn't write that. No, I did. <gasps> Ruth! Ruthie! Hey, Ruthie! What's the matter? Ruthie, come here! Come here quick! <sighs> What's the matter with you? Come here! Look at my typewriter! Well, what about it? Well, look! Look what's on the paper! Hmm. Bring me to life. What's strange about that? Well, I didn't write it! What? Are you crazy? Look, 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 see what it's doing? Underlining those words? How are you doing that? I tell you, I'm not. Look, I said I didn't write it. And the typewriter just said, no, I did. Well, who is it? I don't. C-H-A-R. 
R A C T E R. Character. Oh, me. Now, look, this is a gag of some kind. How are you doing it? I tell you, it isn't a gag. That, that typewriter's haunted. <laughs> this is impossible now, I tell you. It is, huh? Well, look at it. Bring me to life. <laughs> you see? All right, smart guy. It's a great trick. How'd you do it? Ruth, I swear to... I swear I'm not doing it. You're too. Now, look, now, wait. Wait a minute. I'll go way over here, and you'll see. Now it'll write. It'll write. Watch now. I knew it was a gag. Listen, I got housework to do. Now you go on and get that script written. I got it, Ruth. I, I have to think of a character first. It says, it says me, 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 me. All right, there's your character right about him. You really suppose? Now look, darling, I've been married to a writer long enough to believe almost anything. I don't know how this is done, but it's worth trying, isn't it? Well, I... I don't like to monkey with things like that. Aw, oh, don't be silly. Well, it's... Wait a minute. It's one thing to write about supernatural things. It's, well, it's another to experience them. <laughs> You've been wishing always that you had a typewriter that'd do your scripts for you. Now you've got it. Go ahead. Well, yes, but uh, uh, how do I know who this is? Who? Well, well this character or whatever he is. Well, you decide. You bring him to life. Go ahead. Well, who, who should he be? Well, a pirate. Hmm, I don't know anything about pirates. Huh? What? It says I do. Go ahead. I don't like it. Go ahead. Unless this is a gag. It's no gag. Well, right. Well... It was a dark and stormy night. Oh, what's that? Sounds like thunder. There's a storm coming up. My gosh, does this thing control the weather, too? Go on, write some more. Well, this I, uh... Is, this is uh, getting interesting. Oh, all right. Nothing's happening. Well, what did you write? Here, read it. The pirate ship gutted through the roaring waves, all her sails straining under the howling wind. Hey, do you smell anything? Smell? Yeah, I sure do. It smells like the ocean. Go on, read some more, Ruth. I think I know how this works now. Oh, what do you mean? I, I, I think you have to read it to make it happen. Well, well you read it then. No, 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 you. I, I, I don't want to read it. I'm scared. I don't like it either. Look, the typewriter. It says, read it. Well? Well, uh, <clears throat> Captain Jabez Thorne scourges the Spanish main slowly climb the steps of the companion way uh companion way uh, there, there's somebody coming up the stairs oh you know there ain't any stairs in this house oh read some more then flung open the door <gasps> oh he gazed on the wild scene for a second and Drew his cutlass. What? What's that? My Swedish crystal vase. It fell down. He knocked it off with that, that cutlass or whatever it is. 
That vase cost $42. Well, I couldn't help it, honey. You do something about it. Oh, my beautiful vase. And there isn't another one like it in the world. Well, what can I do? For God's sakes, honey, I can't help you. Wait a minute. Wait. He returned the cutlass to its scabbard. Ah, you see? That doesn't bring back my vase. Well, listen. <clears throat> he turned to the beautiful girl at his side. Hey, don't read that. Put out his arms. <gasps> oh! What? Hands. What, what, what's the matter? Hands. Great big hands. Oh, oh. Mm. Ruth, well, what's happening? Mm. Ruth! Mm. Ruth! Somebody kissed me with, <laughs> with whiskers. Oh, you... You pirate you, I'll fix you. Oh, Ruth, no, 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 no. I'll fix you. Ruth, stop! I'll stop him. Oh, Ruth. There's your pirate. Oh, Ruth. <sighs> well, my friends, that all happened a week ago. Sure, it really happened. No, I haven't gotten any explanation for it. All I know is that stuff appeared on my typewriter, and all the other things happened just the way you've heard them. And Ruth made the pirate disappear when she sh tore up the sheet of paper. All I know is it gave me a good idea for a story about a pirate, and I wrote it. People thought it was swell. Oh, and here it is, deadline time again, and me without an idea again. And... Any minute, that Hank Biscotti will be on the phone again asking for my script. <laughs> ah, you see? I'm getting psychic. So, okay. <clears throat> Hello, Hank. How did you know it was me? I always know when it's script day. I've only got about three pages to go, Hank. When do I get it? Uh, tomorrow morning, for sure. Okay. See that you do. Okay, Hank. You'll get it. Oh, you'll get it. Here we go again. Here we go again. Oh, me. What do I want right about this time? Oh, no, 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 no. Not about pirates again. No, no, no. Let me think. <clears throat> no, no, no. I, I, that's not for me. I, I, don't, I don't love love stories. Mm, military? No, no, no. People don't want war stories. Uh, ooh, how about a whodunit? Yeah, a crime story, a murderer, detective, spies, maybe. Calling all cars. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could do that. Nah, nah, awful lot of whodunits on the networks, though. Uh, oh, well, one more won't hurt them. Well, let's go. Okay, now for a character. Character, I wonder. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ruth! Ruthie! Uh, just want to be sure she's asleep after the way she murdered my pirate. <laughs> you know, this could turn out to be a great racket. Have your characters write your for stories for them. Uh, the only thing is you have to be careful what I put down on paper. Don't want to find myself getting choked to death by somebody I brought to life. Oh, hey, what am I saying? Whew. Well, okay, let's see what happens. Page one. You know, you don't have to believe this, friends. <laughs> I'm not so sure I believe it either. Even though I've been mixed up with supernatural stories for so long, I, I guess I'm a sucker for them. Maybe all that didn't happen. Maybe Ruthie and I dreamed it. The only thing is, two people don't usually dream the same dream at the same time. You know, uh, it's that Swedish crystal vase of hers is sure busted. You know, I didn't do it. Okay, hypnotism, maybe. Okay, hypnotism or something. And I'm, uh, I'm going to try it again. Sure, just relax. But we'll see who will do the laughing, huh? Me or you? How's your imagination? Mine's all right, thank you. So shut up while I try this, huh? Just keep quiet and let's see what happens, okay? Hey, character. Character. Come on, character. Come on, character. 
huh? What? No, 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 no. I did that. It wasn't the character. I, I just wrote, are you there? We'll see if he answers. Come on, character. I need a story. You helped me the other day, character. Help me now. Come on, come on. Come to life, character. Do you hear me? Come on, pal. I need help. Don't be mad at me. Pirate? No? Romantic guy? No? Well, a soldier? Well, a detective? <sighs> okay. Okay, so I'm a chump. I can't pull a character out of thin air like that. So go on and laugh. I'm sorry. Well, if you were sitting around waiting in the country at this time of night, all alone, your wife's sound asleep, and this is the only light in the house, and you've got to write a supernatural story before morning, well, try it sometime, friend. Just keep quiet and let me try to work, huh? You've got nothing to do but listen to the radio. How'd you like to have to write those things that you have to listen to, huh? In the middle of the night, all alone by yourself. Okay, quiet, please. Hmm. Ah, listen to this. <clears throat> I am alone. I am alone in a great dog house with only the weird wail of the wind and the whispering willows. Uh, do you think that's too much alliteration? Weird wail of the wind's whispering willows? Uh, I kind of like it. <clears throat> In the whispering willows to keep me somber company. Yeah, that's okay, huh? Maybe I'll get a story yet. You just keep quiet. I sure wish that character would give me a hand, though. Now, what could happen to a guy sitting here like I am? Let's see. What could happen? Uh, could be a ghost? Nah, nah, nah. No ghost. Chains clanking and stuff. Corny sound effects. Nah, 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 nah. A burglar. Hmm, well, a burglar might be burglar might be good. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do about a burglar, though. We haven't got anything worth stealing around here. Besides, burglars are kind of corny, too, aren't they? You know, uh, you always think of a fat guy in a mask with an old-fashioned dark lantern and a bag over his shoulder, like those, like those fellows uh, they draw in Colliers. Uh, what's the name of the fella that does it? Larry Reynolds? A big fat guy and a little old one. <laughs> <laughs> Burglars are funny. <laughs> Burglars are out. <sighs> well, what then? Uh, who would come sneaking into your house in the middle of the night? Let's see. Let's see. <gasps> hey, what about an escaped convict? Yeah, an escaped convict. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, you could do a lot of things with an escaped convict. Guy's wife's asleep, you know, a desperate character. I could have left the door unlocked. He could have sneaked in. I'd never know it. He could be looking over my shoulder right now. Hey, stop that. Whew, scare myself to death. Hey, you know, this will be all right. This will be all right. Uh, he, um... Let's see, he could have sneaked into Ruthie's room. Oh, uh, did I wake you, Ruthie? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just talking to myself and, uh, you know. <coughs> Ruth! 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 <coughs> What's the matter, darling? Where's the light? Never mind the light, mister. Uh, uh, oh! And you shut up right now. Ow! I said shut up. Ow! Ow! Quiet now. Stop Ow! it. Stop it and I won't hurt you. Now, stop. You, you hurt my husband. He'll be all right. Now, just keep quiet a minute. Who, who are you? Ma'am, I just crashed out of the big house, as they say in the movies. You... You, you? I'm an escaped convict, ma'am. <laughs> and for your information, I'm a pretty desperate escaped convict. Uh, where's your husband keep his clothes? What? Well, I'm still wearing the clothes the state thoughtfully provides for convicted murderers, ma'am, and they're rather conspicuous. So I need a change. Uh, which is his closet? You, you killed him. No, ma'am, I didn't kill him. But I may do that yet if I don't get a little cooperation out of you. Oh, let me out. Now, you just sit tight and tell me where to find his other suit. Where's the, the light? Hmm. Hey, 
You're very pretty. Let me go to my husband. No, no, darling, no. I've got other plans for you. It's a, uh, is, is this his closet? Oh, yes. Nice little suits. Yeah, I, I like this one. Uh, yeah. A little on the large side for me, but uh, yeah, you can shut your eyes while I change. I'll, I'll, I'll need a shirt, too. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you. First, I'm going to get into this nice new oversized suit of clothes. Oh, let me see if he's all right. No, sorry. Ooh, <laughs> nice shirts. Sorry, no, I, I don't think he's dead. And uh, Even if he is, well, they can't hang me more than once, you know. Please, please. Uh, be still. Oh. I said be still. <sighs> Listen, ma'am, don't be misled because I'm treating you nicely. I really am a very rough person. You might have read about me in the papers. Oh, please. Won't you? Just... No, no, now shut up or I'll have to sh shut you up. What are you got? Well, I, I, now, as soon as I get these clothes adjusted, I'm going to leave here, ma'am. Well, well, then can and I... And I'm going to take you with me. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, they're out after me already, and they want me pretty badly. They have rifles and shotguns, ma'am, and they won't hesitate to use them. That is, unless there's a lady present, you see? Now, now a necktie... You're not. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> nice tie, this. Mm, very nice. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Y you see, if I might be so crude, I intend to take you along for a kind of shield, ma'am. Oh. You see, the boys won't shoot, you understand, if there's a possibility of putting a bullet through you. So I suggest you get up and get a coat or something. It's getting quite a lot cooler out. <clears throat> I said get up. I won't. Ma'am, you'd better. Oh, please, let me see my husband. I told you he'd be all right. And if you're a good girl, you might get back to him one of these days. If you're not, um, uh, does your husband wear hats? <laughs> if you're not, you might not. Come on, get up. I won't. I I suppose it was Ruth screaming that brought me back through the darkness to a kind of semi-consciousness. The light was still on in her room. I could hear them talking. He's still out cold, ma'am. I, I kept my eyes shut. I, I, I don't know why. I suppose I ought to got, have got up and helped Ruth. I was still pretty groggy. I just lay there. I could hear them. Come on, come on, ma'am. I haven't got much time to waste. I'm not going, I tell you. I got my eyes open just a little, and then I could see Ruth with her heavy coat thrown around her, and he had her by the hand, and he was pulling her toward the door. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. No. Come on. It seemed, seemed to be a long time before I could get up on one elbow. My head hurt. I wasn't sure what happened. Ruth was gone. Who, the man, who was the man I saw dragging her away? I, I started to think. Finally, the fog cleared away enough so I could figure out what to do. Seemed hours later that I got to my feet. I staggered out to the other room where I'd been working at my typewriter. I should do something I knew, but what should I do? My mind wouldn't work. I wanted to go in after them, but something stopped me. Something wouldn't let me go. I, I didn't know what it was. Something was making noise through the ringing in my ears. What was it? And at last, I recognized the sound. It was my typewriter. I fell down as I staggered across to it. I, I, I crawled the rest of the way, forced myself to read the paper. The keys were tapping away, and slowly, painfully, I read the words, Bring me to life! Bring me to life! Bring who to life? Me! 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 Said the typewriter! Me! 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 And at last, my pirate! Oh, come on, character! Come on, pirate! And the typewriter, it clacked away. Hurry, 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 it said, painfully. Oh, so painful, I got on one hand of the, on the keyboard. The letters were blurred, but I found them. <clears throat> 
pirate comes in, draws Cutlass, sees enemy, goes to rescue through French window, pursues enemy, enemy frightened. (sighs) Wife knows, rescue coming. Pirate raises Cutlass. (laughs) And yeah, I'm on bail now. On bail. Well, it was... It was pretty hard to explain a dead man wearing my clothes in my garage, dead from the wicked slashing blows of a great sword. A a cutlass. Hard to explain? (laughs) It's impossible. You believe it. I believe it. Ruth believes it. And that's the whole story. Thanks, character. Good night, character. Thank you to our wonderful performers and to our brilliant production manager, Barb Shoulders, and to you, our audience. We hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for the next Vintage Radio Hour from Shh Productions. On Thursday, May 28th, we'll feature Brian Biller, Jared Saltman, and Shailene Hardy in a disturbing little tale called Is This Murder? The second part of our doubleheader, a haunting story about unrequited love and murder. The Evening and the Morning features Wolf Cheryl, Phil Wells, and Kim Garrison Hopcraft. Until then, shh.